Scoliosis is a lateral curvature of the spine seen most often in adolescent girls. It is the most common spinal deformity in children. Scoliosis is an S-shaped lateral curvature of the spine of 10 degrees or greater. It can be congenital and is often associated with congenital anomalies. Children with neuromuscular disease or cerebral palsy may develop scoliosis due to muscular weakness. The most common type of scoliosis is idiopathic, meaning there is no apparent cause. Idiopathic scoliosis is not usually seen prior to age 10 and is found in girls seven times more often than in boys. Scoliosis can also be caused by trauma or be secondary to tumor, poor nutrition, or metabolic problems. Risk factors for scoliosis include a familial inheritance pattern, congenital anomalies, neuromuscular disease or cerebral palsy, poor posture, and poor nutrition. Early recognition and treatment of scoliosis is important because the flexible curvature becomes rigid and permanent with age. Treatment includes straightening and realignment of the vertebrae by bracing externally or by internal fixation with instrumentation and bone grafting. For a curvature up to 25 degrees, there may be no treatment, but the child will need diligent follow-up every four to six months. Progressive curvature of the spine between 25 and 45 degrees requires bracing until the skeletal system is mature. This means external bracing for 23 hours each day. The most common types of braces used are the Boston Brace and the TLSO Custom Molded Jacket. Scoliosis with an angle greater than 40 degrees generally requires surgery. The surgery includes spinal fusion and internal stabilization with Harrington rods, Luke rods, or Dwyer cable. Many times the first sign noticed by the parent of a child with scoliosis is ill-fitting clothing, most specifically uneven hemlines. As the curvature becomes more pronounced, more signs and symptoms appear, such as uneven shoulders or shoulder blades, protruding scapula with one side of the back higher than the other, unequal arm to body spaces or a protruding hip, hip and or buttock asymmetry, unequal leg lengths, or a malaligned trunk or pelvis. Diagnostic testing for scoliosis includes a detailed history and physical assessment, plus x-rays of the spine to determine the severity and location of the curve. Your nursing management includes routine screening in adolescents. This is still recommended even though recent studies have not verified a difference in outcomes for adolescents routinely screened and those who were not. Once scoliosis has been diagnosed, the child and parents must be instructed in the application and care of the prescribed brace. It is important to encourage participation in active exercise program to prevent atrophy of the spine and abdominal muscles with bracing. The use of the brace and the exercise are both important and should be considered simultaneous treatment. You'd also provide education and support on an ongoing basis related to the schedule for wearing the brace, then continuation of exercises, padding under the brace, and the care of the brace itself. Be sure to emphasize the importance of returning for re-evaluation of the treatment for the duration of the use of the brace, and if surgery is required, provide preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative care specific to the needs of the child. Scoliosis can lead to physiologic and cosmetic alterations of the spine, pelvis, and chest. Severe scoliosis can interfere with normal respiration from the distortion and deformity of the ribcage. Other complications include altered growth and development, back pain, urinary problems, fatigue, disability, altered mobility, cardiac and pulmonary complications, skin breakdown under the brace, infection, body image changes, and depression.